Simp Tales. Thanks again for tagging me in. Let's get to it. Oh, yeah. This going to be a barn burner. And from the title, I can tell why you're here. And I won't disappoint. Life can be a minefield. And this goes double once one gets into management. There are traps aplenty. Especially for black men such as myself. The world seems to hate black men with impunity. This is backed up at the rate that we are killed, jailed, publicly berated, etc. This also stands for kin and skin folk. Those closest to us indeed do the most damage. That's if the male or man allows it by blindly participating and leading with emotion over logic. Logic is as nature. It is not to be defeated. So a summer day at my place of employment as a supervisor of over 19 employees. That's over 19 different personalities and quadruple the amount of landmines to evade. I found it quite easy to do so, though, because once all situations were handled with professionalism versus personal feelings and emotion, I was guaranteed to win. The true mark of a leader is to lead through all nonsense, both internal and external. A warm day, primed for baseball at Wrigley Field. I am doing my pre-shift rituals of speaking with the lined up regular fans, listening to raga music, watching the employees arrive through the, through the main gate, and just making sure that my area is ready for business. The day gets started, and after the initial rush of patrons, it is now time to start handing out breaks and lunch times for the employees under my tutelage. Shortly after, it is now time to start cutting people from the roster as they are not needed throughout the entire game. Going down the line of who wants to stay and leave, my roster was significantly smaller, which makes for some interesting conversations. But remaining cognizant of my position, with all respect due, keeps nonsense at bay from jump. This is what was understood by all of the employees that has ever worked under my tutelage. Life, even in professional settings, still occur. Meaning gossip, matchmaking, etc. will be present. There were times when my employees spoke intimately uh, with me about their family, friends, love interests, including other employees present at the time. It was revealed that I had crushes and or ladies interested in getting to know me. As I spoke about earlier, that I handle everything um, professional in a professional setting. Even after work, my professional mindset is still is still hard at work. Hell, hours after finishing my work, my mind is reflecting on the day, seeking ways to improve where improvements are needed. The evening was progressing as usual, and the employees are free to converse, eat, break as needed, because they knew as long as they did what was expected, They can do practically what they want within reason. At this time, I am getting my mind ready for the various exodus speeds of the patrons. Uh, Because at a event like a baseball game, people are always coming and going at different stages of the game. And so a female employee approaches me to converse and expressed interest in some bodily conversation. Now, those who know me know that it is not easy to gain favor with me, and when when and if favor is granted, do not mess it up. So, <clears throat> excuse me. 
So remaining within boundaries, I listened, laughed, and enjoyed the company of the lady. She seemed anxious to bed me to the point of pressuring me to provide an answer to her, to her advances. I held firm in what we were there to do and everything else would be spoken about at a later time. That's if I was interested and she was satisfied with that answer. I can tell that she felt confident in herself as she womanly walked away. You fellas know that womanly walk, twisting of the hips, which provides more jiggle. (laughs) My phone number is public, as it was on the business cards that were distributed at the beginning of the baseball season uh, during interview processes, hiring processes, etc., So now we exchanged pleasantries, talked about this and that, and then the true nature of what she wanted was revealed. We had not seen each other besides at work, and yet she felt comfortable enough to ask for money. This is where the nice guy suit was taken off, And the pimp suit was then put on. Meaning, ain't shit happening. You got me all the way fucked up. Thinking that my name is Charms. You know, candy sucker. Now, keep in mind that no physical contact had occurred. And none wasn't going to either. She may have been a hoe or talking like one. But I don't do tricking. Immediately... I say to her that you work for what you want. And and if that's not enough, move along to another dude or other dudes who would have taken such a low brow offer. This ain't that, I told her. Embarrassed, she apologized repeatedly. All was forgiven on my end. I do not take things personally. As I, <clears throat> excuse me, as I understand that people are just people. Now, seeing her at a, seeing, seeing her at other site locations and speaking with her, she displayed respect that meant more to me than her paying me to hit the pussy. Yeah, I know that you thought I was going to tell how I got taken advantage of by a female. But on this channel, I make it my business to not disappoint you, the listener and watchers, as you are important to me. But sadly, I must disappoint you, not having a symptom of loss. The only loss was hers and in me knowing and doing better. Something that we all can learn from, and that's the reality. Salute to you for tagging me in on this talk, making history as I share on Rasta's realities. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel as it helps it grow, and growth is good. Comment down below your thoughts and check out Rasta's Realities Patreon edition for the exclusive content that is raw and uncut, something that cannot be put here on YouTube. I am R. Akil Bomani for Rastas Realities, and until next time, peace to you.